Hello, everyone. Um, I hope uh, you all are doing great. Um, I'm doing much, 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 much better. So, and that's always a bonus. Um, I'm still, I still got a residual of my cold, but uh, other than that, you know, I'm starting to feel really good. My starting to feel a little bit more chipper. Um, anyway, this is the uh, scrawler box for February, and now I have broken the seal, <clears throat> but I have not looked inside, so. We will find out what's inside, shall we? Oh, yes, and for those of you who are not familiar with Scrawler Box, it is a monthly subscription box that is out of the UK. And if you are in the United States and you want one of these boxes, it will take at least two weeks. This one, thankfully, arrived on time. It was exactly two weeks from the time they sent it. So I actually got this one on time. The last box, which was January's box, it took an entire month. And I swear, I'm sure it went by China. Because <laughs> everything takes a month when it's coming from... It must have taken on a really slow boat. <laughs> because... It did take a month to get here, and I was like really anxious and given Scrawler Box. You know, I already mentioned this in a previous uh, Scrawler Box um, unboxing that Scrawl the Scrawler Box people were really nice at answering my email right away, and they didn't let any grass grow under their feet. So they were fantastic. So, um, and I recommend uh, Scrawler Box because it, they always have a challenge every month, they always have a challenge. And um, they have high quality um, art supplies in each box. It usually Oh, I don't know. It, it varies sometimes, you know, uh, four, sometimes six. It depends. But anyway, let's get into this box. And, of course, I broke the seal and everything. Oop. Okay. Ooh, it's got a little bit of weight to it. And let me open up this beautiful paper. All right, I'd like to try to save it. Try not to tear it too much. As you all know, I like to save the... I like to recycle the... the uh, let me get the... the uh, card out. This is the card. I don't want to show you what the challenge is yet. And then we have a Scrawler Box sticker. And every month they always have a featured artist. Let me see if I can get the card out from under here. There's the card. Okay, I've already seen some of the stuff that's in there. And this is the uh, the, um, the uh, artwork for um, February. And the artist is Carla Co. Chua, I think. But uh, I will hold it steady in case you want to read the uh, back here and um, look her up. But that is a very beautiful, beautiful uh, drawing. And this is, you know, it's frameable. I, I just don't know which way it goes. Does it go this way? I think it goes this way. But this, uh, all these, uh, all these uh, prints and everything are always so frameable. So, I mean, I haven't framed any of them, but um, well, I don't have any frames. I don't have the money to go get frames right now. But um, these are really beautiful. Really beautiful. Very s gives you, gets you in the mood for spring. Only in the southwest, the spring for us is like hot. So <laughs> it starts off cool, but then it gets really hot. So anyway, let us get into these, this lovely, 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 lovely box. Ooh, I see so much good stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, first off, what do we got? Oops, that's the challenge side. Um, do, 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 do. it says this month we are uh, welcoming spring with a bright and vibrant box of art supplies and inspiration. Um, experiment with this set of pencils Ooh. and explore how adding water affects the pigment. Uh, use varying washes and pencil strokes to explore different, um, different mark making uh, techniques to create your artwork. And first off is a Faber-Castell uh, Gold Faber, Gold Faber, uh, Aqua Pencils. And it's a set of 12. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and here's, here they are. And, uh, okay, they're in cellophane. Of course they are. Of course they're wrapped, naturally. Let me open this. I love it that that watercolor pencils come in tins. I absolutely love it. Now I have a, um, a set of uh, Faber-Castell watercolor pencils, but they aren't the high quality ones. They're just the regular watercolor pencils. So, and I've heard great things about these particular ones. And let me see if I can get this open without all the pencils come tumbling out. 
Okay, which way does this come out? I mean, some open. <clears throat> okay, there we go, there we go. Ah, oh, there we are. Here are the pencils. And let me see, where is a... I gotta find it. I guess I'll have to start a new page. And then we will do the colors. Ooh, ah, it broke. It felt like it broke. Hold on a minute. Ooh, you can barely see that. I don't know, maybe you can see it on camera. I can barely see it. Oh, that's because it's white. <laughs> that makes a difference, doesn't it? It's freaking white. <laughs> Let me see if I can do it over over that. Well, no, not really. It doesn't go over acrylic too well, does it? But anyway, that's the white. I don't know if you can see that very well, but that's white. <laughs> it's like, why isn't it showing up? <laughs> it's because it's white on white, you dummy. <laughs> Oh, Lord, have mercy. I Sometimes I am just so stupid. <laughs> like, why isn't it showing up? How come? It's because it's white. And then we've got yellow. Or a yellow color. And then we have orange. Now, don't ask me why I always say orange like that. I just do. I'm just weird. I'm a very weird person. Ask any of my friends, and they will tell you, yep, she's weird. I have always been out there, in the sense that I've never been quite normal. <laughs> I've, never, I've never been normal. You can never accuse me of being normal. But then, normal is a relative term. I mean, who is really, what is normal? That's what I want to know. What is actually normal? What constitutes normal? And we will test this out with a water brush. I always have a handy dandy water brush handy. I love these colors. And what I'm going to do with this, I do not know. Well, anyway, like my, my, I think I said before, my eyesight's getting much, much better. So hopefully I will be able to, before the March box comes, Hopefully, I will be able to do something with these lovely colors. Oops, I'm out of frame. Now, I actually have a whole sketchbook of swatches. I just had decided to do a, just have a sketchbook that just had swatches in it so that when I and then I you know of course I marked them all down oops and um, so now I can just go to that sketchbook and um, now this one's easy enough to I don't even have to really do this one this is black okay that's that and get my water brush out. Oops, wrong drawer. Okay, that's the water brush. This is the water brush. Uh, I'm not going to do the white one because you can't see it anyway, so, so there. I think what I like about it is when I put the water on it, the the uh, pencil strokes uh, disappear. I like that. I like that light blue.
These are beautiful colors. And that's the colors. Oh, those are pretty. Those are really, really pretty. And then we have um, do, 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 uh, a Faber Castell water brush. Um, this water brush expresses with um, ideal properties and easy handling. The integrated groover, groover oh, grooves, groover? Oh, um, and <laughs> I hate when I misread something. Um, and wedge design on the cap can be used for, sc for scratch and scraping uh, techniques. The high quality synthetic hairs are soft and pliable and hold lots of paint. The tip will remain dimensionally stable even after uh, intense use. And this is the oops, this is the water brush. Oh, let me let me uh, put these. There we go. Put that back in there. And here is the water brush. Now, of course, I'm not going to put any water in it right now. I will do it when I... I love it. I mean, I've got lots of water brushes now. I mean, seriously, I have got so many water brushes. And then I guess this part here, you can you can scrape. Let me see here. I don't know how you would do that, but I guess you... Well, I did scrape it. But you really can't tell. Maybe it has to be wet because it's dry now. So anyway. But anyway, this is the brush. There is the tip of the brush. I am looking forward to using this. Let me see how what it looks like. Okay, let's see if I can get this off. Ah, there we go. And that's what it looks like. Well, that'll be easy to fill. This, this water brush is absolutely my favorite water brush. I use it constantly. I don't know what brand this is. I think it's either a Derwent. I think it's a Derwent. Uh, I can't see. I can't see the... It's, it's on the barrel, but I can't see the, the name of it. Oops. I smacked you. Sorry about that. Okay, and next is... A Statler a Mars plastic eraser. A uh, <clears throat> oh wait a minute no 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 hold on a minute got down got ahead of myself. Uh, a Statler Mars L Lumograph pencil, a quality pencil um, that is remarkably break resistant and easy to sharpen, mainly due to the uh, to its uh, specially formulated. Um, super bonded leads. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, the soft graphite Oh, the soft graphite of the Mars Lumograph pencils uh, draw and erase easily. Oh good. It's, it's sharpened. Okay, let us see this. Oh, 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 oh. I see that. See, can you see that? There is a brush icon on there so which means that it is a water soluble pencil but and there's that and then where's my water brush and of course I put the top on naturally and then ta-da oh I love these I love these water soluble graphite pencils I really do I fell in love with them um, from a smart art box, and I have loved them ever since. And this is a, let me see, does it say what kind it is? Yes, it is a 4B. See, it says, I don't know if you can see that. See, it says 4B. 4B or not 4B. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It doesn't work with a 4B. It only works with a 2B. <laughs> and then... Oh, it might be of note with my right eye. I, I remember I told you guys that I had an, uh, uh, a uh, bubble in my eye. It's now, it's very small, 
But every so often it'll get in my, in my line of vision and I'll think there's something in front of me and I'll try to wipe it away. <laughs> okay. Next is a Statler Mars plastic eraser. A quality... Let me get this in focus here. A quality eraser uh, that leaves no discoloration um, of itself on the paper. It has a sliding sleeve for convenient handling and is pathal what? Is pathalate? Oh, okay, whatever. And latex free. Uh, good performance with minimal minimal wear and crumbling. So let me take that pencil that I just had, and we shall make a mark. And where's the eraser? And here is the eraser. Let me open it, because it is not opened. There we go. I still can't believe, uh, I, can't, I can't get over that one box that I was opening and I couldn't, fi couldn't figure out how come the, I couldn't get the lid off. <laughs> it was sealed. <laughs> I still, I still crack me up every time I think about it. Like, you it wet. Oh, I like the feel of that eraser. Yeah, that race is really good. That really erases good. Can it erase this stuff? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Once the watercolor sits, it won't. Nope, just the just the pencil that. It, so yeah, the race is really good. I like that. I can never have too many erasers. I can never have too many of these. I think this is pretty cool. It's got a sleeve on it. But I can never have too many. I've got so many erasers now, it's not even funny. But I always, I always say to myself, you know what? You can never have too many erasers. And then, let me see if there's anything else in the box, because I'm not looking. We have a Statler Metal Single Hole Sharpener. Uh, sharpens standard size pencils up to 8.2 millimeters um, let's see, with a sharpening angle of 23 degrees for clear and accurate um, lines. Let me see. Ah, here we are. And here's the sharpener. So let me see here. I need to put this in a let me get this garbage can out from under the, under the table. Let me put this plastic so the cat can't get at it. My cat, I don't know if anybody, any of y'all have cats, but do y'all have cats that like to eat plastic? Because my cat, my Indy, for some unknown odd reason, he loves to eat plastic, and I can't, I have to try to keep it from him. Yep, works really nicely. I just, oops, I just here. Let me poke you here. Let me poke you in the eye. Um, yep, it works really nice. I just sharpened it. Nice, very nice. Uh, I, you know, it's funny because when I first started doing art, I would get these funky pencils, or not pencils, but pencil sharpeners, and they would never sharpen my. Um, and here's the um, the candy that always comes, or the you know that comes in in a in a art in a, in a uh, scrawler box. And let's see what this to say. It says, "Feeny watermelon." Ooh, I like water. It's fizzy. Ooh, it's fizzy bubble gum. Oh, I've never had fizzy bubble gum before. Oh, cool. Look at that. It looks like a watermelon. Is that not cool? That is so cool. <laughs> it actually looks like a little watermelon. How cute. I don't want to eat this. It looks like a watermelon. I'll give it to my Barbie dolls. <laughs> no, just kidding. And then, let me see, what else does it say? Does it say anything else on here? No, it does not. And then, of course, it usually has paper with it. And here we are. We've, it's got some paper with it. And there should be... Hmm. And here's the paper, watercolor paper. Just one sheet this time, which is unusual, because usually we have at least two sheets. So let me see, and there usually is a scrawler box. Ah, oh, that's right. I did say there was a scrawler box sticker, didn't I? I'm used to the, the little long one. So, yep, they've got the little scrawler box sticker. And that is it for... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Forgot the challenge. <clears throat> and the challenge... 
<clears throat> for February is quiet morning. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know what I'm going to do for quiet morning. I was thinking about, you know, when I saw, saw it was quiet morning, I was thinking, well, my favorite mornings was when I was in Hawaii and I would sit on the beach like in the morning when, you know, I, I would, you know, I, first thing I'd do, I'd, you know, take off and I would go around Oahu to each of the beach parks and I would just sit there and either read, or, of course, I'd go swimming. But I would, and it was in Oahu that I actually got over my fear of the ocean. Now, it's not that I was afraid of the ocean per se. It was what's in the ocean that I was worried about. Because <laughs> I'm not afraid of swimming. I love swimming. But I was always afraid of what was in the ocean. Because, you know, you got jellyfish, you got sharks. And, um, you know, and I'm always, I was afraid that something would always, you know, take a nip out of my toe or something. But anyway, that's where I got over my fear of the, fear of the ocean. I had a whale of a time, too. I mean, I had such a good time. I kept getting knocked down by the waves. And I, well, I was trying to get out of the ocean. And it was at uh, Waimanalu Beach Park, I believe. And I was trying to get out of the ocean. I got in, no problem. But you have to time it right when you're coming out. And anybody who's gone swimming in the ocean knows you have to time it right when you're getting out. Well, <laughs> I didn't time it right. I kept laughing. <laughs> And that was my problem. I kept laughing. And every time I laughed, the wave would knock me down. And there was these Japanese tourists that were watching me. <laughs> and they were laughing at me. But, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't offended by it because I was laughing at myself because I could not get out of the water. <laughs> I mean, eventually I got out of it. But, I mean, I just wasn't timing. I was having such a good time getting knocked down. I couldn't stop laughing. So, <laughs> eventually I did get out of the water, obviously, I'm here. But, um, but that was, that's my idea of a quiet morning, just, just sitting there and listening to the waves and listening to the, you know, the, uh, the, 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 um, you know, them coming ashore and I'm trying to get this, this, uh, what do you call this? There, I was trying to get that out, that, uh, what do you call it out of the way? The, um, sharpener because I was I need to put these colored pencils back in there and it was going to cause it to be bumpy. But anyway, um, that is the uh, scrawler box for February. And, um, wow, I got through this one really well. Of course, I didn't really have much for... I didn't have anything for, the la for Starlet yet. I mean, I did show you guys. I do believe I did show you a rough sketch that... I, well, not kind of like a sketch that I had done that I was going to use for Starlet this one remember and I was going to have a mermaid wearing a starlit starfish but I, of course it's just the pencil drawing right now and I'm waiting for my actually her her head's a little bit off I think her head's deformed this part here it's not quite right but anyway that's what little preliminary sketches are for so um, you know if you don't like something then you change it but um, anyway I haven't finished this yet because I've still got to line it and everything and I was waiting for my eyes to get you know healed so that I can finish the 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 uh, challenge for fit for January, but um, but anyway that was that was for I haven't like I said I haven't finished it. obviously I haven't finished it yet and I've got to transfer it to the other paper so but anyway um, that is scrawler box for February and um, I hope wherever you are in the world that you are having a wonderful day that it's bright and sunny and cool where you are that it is actually warming up and you, you've got less snow on the ground um, depending where you are um, so far knock on wood um, it's been really really nice here in the southwest I hate the summer months when it is getting it gets so hot that I have to leave my house closed up I love to open my windows and doors I love to get the fresh air in here um, I love the coolness. I do not like heat. Heat and I do not go to get well together. I just do not. Now, a lot of people, I have friends who live in the southwest, who live in this area, and they love the heat. I do not like the heat. I was talking to a friend of mine. We were, what were we doing? We were talking about something. And, uh, no, no, it was an Uber driver. It was actually an Uber driver. And he said that he loves the southwest. And I guess he was raised in Yuma or someplace down down south and um, he said he loves the southwest I said oh no I hate it um, we moved here because it was a little bit cheaper than say California 
And if I knew now what I know, I mean, if I knew then what I know now, we would have never moved from Hawaii either. Because you, you can find reasonable places in Hawaii, especially back then. But, you know, um, but you just had, it's all dependent on where you were looking. And if you're going to the North Shore on Oahu, yeah, you're going to find some expensive places. Honolulu's expensive. But on the Waianae side, which is the leeward side of the, I think it's the leeward side. Anyway, it's the west side of the island. You can actually find reasonable places to live, reasonable apartments, reasonable houses. Um, and so we're going to be moving to the big island. And we're not going to, that is the big island. <laughs> That's near, well, obviously it's near the volcano. And um, we're actually moving into, we're looking into moving into a little town that's near the volcano. Um, it's like in 2014, the little town, little village was actually threatened by the volcano. So, and here's the kicker is I've always loved volcanoes ever since I was a little girl. And, you know, I, I learned about Pompeii and everything. And I'm not worried about the lava getting me or anything because it's, it moves really, really slow. And you can actually outwalk it. You know, you can actually walk away from it without, you know, getting, you know, hurt. But, um, uh, it's the pyroclastic flow that does it and not, not so much, you know, slow moving lava that that's not what kills you. It's well, of course the fumes and everything could, you could suffocate by it, but you know, you're in a wide open space and you shouldn't be suffocating from, from the fumes from the lava. But anyway, I've always wanted to live near a volcano and well, we're looking into a place where we could, you know, be close to it. Like there was one house that we looked into that was like right down the road from the volcano. <laughs> Literally right down the road. You could walk to, you know, the volcanoes national park. That's how close it was. But anyway, um, that's my story of <laughs> being prepared to move to Hawaii. Um, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a wonderful day, as I said, and, um, y'all take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. And until next time, God bless. Bye.